Sir, to note's respect, you can call me Mr. Speaker. The president doesn't know I'm here. Well, this is Washington. Everybody knows you're here. They just don't know on whose behalf. I'd like to say the American people, but I, <laughs> I hear how that sounds. Well, you don't represent the people any more than I do. We're in the minority everywhere but in here. Maybe you disagree, but I think we can get more done working together. And what would we be working together for? Hmm? You and your mother look at this country the way politicians have looked at it for 250 years, as if there's this ideal America out there and it's just out of reach. This country, although we made strides, is arguably in the same place it was all those years ago. We have the same issues. We just use different names now. We, once we called it slavery, now we call it mass incarceration. We used to worry about robber barons. Now we worry about the 1%. When all is said and done, none of us have done much of anything except haggle over the check that John Adams left us with. But you're a Republican. This is the 21st century, Mr. Haas. None of us is only one thing. So you, you don't believe in a two-party system anymore? Well, both sides think they know what's best for this country, but we never agree. And the citizens see us fighting each other, so why should they believe we know what we're doing? Our definition of democracy is a first draft written centuries ago. But we can finally do better once we stop pretending that people act in their own best interests and get them to see that they should leave those decisions to us. So then you believe in an oligarchy? I only believe that we should let our elected leaders lead. Well, then let my mother lead. I would if she'd been elected. You want to bridge the gap between the sides? So do I, by eliminating them. You take a step towards me publicly. Come work for me, and we'll be that much closer. No parties, no fights, just one voice, the voice of the people.